Coco in the building. All right, so let's make sure that you get that, get that little mic a little bit closer to the mouth so we can have a good audio. Okay. All right, there we go, there we go. What's going on with you, little lady? How you feel? Uh, feel pretty good, I guess. All right, all right, all right. Um, first thing first, before be, before I get you to introduce yourself, your your tag name on your TikTok is made with whiskey. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. What what what's what's the significance of that of that tag name? Okay, so let's just say. Not too long ago, mm -hmm. I was, I guess, I guess you could say alcoholic. I drank a lot, and my drink of choice was whiskey, more specifically, Crown Royal whiskey. Mm. So, it just came from there. Okay, okay, okay. So, are, are, are we saying we're lush over here? I was. I was. I'm not anymore. I don't even drink at all anymore, actually. All right. So go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and let everybody know how much whiskey you was drinking before you got into trucking. Every day, all day. Okay. But, um, well, my name's Coco. My TikTok name is Ray Whiskey. I, um, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, but I lived in Florida for a few years. I loved it. I kind of like that. All right. And you, you, you going, huh? you, you going in and out. It's like you, you moving in towards the mic and then you moving away from the mic. I actually didn't move at that time. It could just be my stupid headset. Cause blue parrots suck. Well, you you might need to take the you you might need to turn the the blue parrot off and just talk to me through the phone. Or are, wait, are you driving? I'm sitting waiting on my paperwork, but ever since I bought this blue parrot, I bought it brand new. It likes to hang up on people. Oh, then we 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 need to turn that blue parrot off and just talk to me through the phone. That okay. might. Yeah, that, that might be a little bit better during the duration of this interview. Okay, is this better? Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's start over. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let everybody know how much whiskey you used to drink before you got into trucking. Okay, so yeah, my name is... My TikTok name is Mabel Whiskey. I used to drink a lot. I don't anymore. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I actually been back in Memphis since like 2018. But before that, I live in Hollywood, Florida, Miami Beach, pretty much everywhere down there. And I've been only driving for a year now, a year and some change, actually. Okay, okay. So, so I'm a newbie. So Memphis, uh Memphis, Tennessee. Let's uh born born and raised in Memphis. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's uh let's uh let's talk about the 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 tragedy that, that just happened down there uh recently to uh I I'm I believe he was a Memphis native, uh young Duff. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, he's um he was actually born in Chicago, but he's been living in um Memphis since he was like two or three or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when I found out about that, I was actually in orientation for my new company, and it broke my heart. That man has done so much for the Memphis community. And is it okay if I put you on hold real quick? Because yeah. my dispatcher is calling you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Lord, my dispatcher is getting on my nerves. <laughs> That's what's up. All right. So you was uh you you was uh conversating about uh young dolphin, what what all he did for uh the Memphis community. 
Yeah, he's done, honestly, in my opinion, he's done way more for Memphis. Even though he wasn't born in Memphis, he's done way more for Memphis than people that have been, that were born in Memphis, like Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti has not done shit for Memphis besides open up a restaurant with expensive ass food that tastes like fucking Popeyes and just nasty. And Young Dolph has did, did turkey giveaways. He gave a fan a Lamborghini for no reason. Just gave a, a fan a Lamborghini. Him and his artists and the people that are signed to PRE, one in particular, his name is Grove Hero. He grew up in the same like area as me. They hold in, like block parties or stop the violence block parties and they give away cars to single women that need a car. I haven't seen this happen from anybody else famous that has a platform that can actually help change something and if it's besides him. And so you say where where were you when when um when he was taken out? I was in Chicago. Hello. All right. So uh rest in peace to young young Dolph. Um I'm I'm familiar with uh with, with a few of his work. Um you know, I'm you know, I'm from the old school, so I, I gravitate more to you know to my old school cats than I do the new school guys. But but you know, getting you know, getting taken out over some bullshit, you know, is is really not a good thing. I mean, all these rappers that's 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 up and coming and 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 just getting taken out for whatever reason is 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 crazy man you know i I guess it's the world that we living in now that somebody that takes offense or somebody that takes an issue instead of just you know instead of just you know knuckle up with them nah they just want to take a gun and just take them out it's crazy from what i saw it wasn't even a knuckle up situation um someone said that he had a hit out on him and um someone else said that he was killed by his friend and his friend is on um not tiktok instagram um he posted on instagram a few days ago about how he was gonna kill himself because everybody think he killed young dog and now he ain't got nothing to live for, which honestly, in my opinion, makes me feel like he did something. Because why are you going to kill yourself? Granted, yeah, his wounds or whatever may come out, out like after you or whatever, but you need to be trying to prove your innocence instead of trying to, you know, tuck your head between your legs and run the fuck away. Mm. All right. Excuse me. All right. So you say you uh so you say you've been rocking out for a little uh for a little over a year. Uh what you was doing before you got in the trucking? I was a security guard. <laughs> how long how, how how long was that for? Um, not even a year. I've had a lot of jobs. I'm like, um who is the guy off of Martin that had a lot of jobs? Brother man from the I fifth flow. I was him. <laughs> <laughs> or no, no, not brother man from the flip flow. Uh Tommy. Tommy. I ain't got no job, Tommy. Is that the one? I always had, I don't know. It was off of one sitcom where this guy had a million jobs. <laughs> um, I would say something more relatable to me, but I know you probably don't watch cartoons. I love cartoons. But it's a character on a um, gumball. And he works at every place in town. That was me. Hold on. What's what's the name of the what's the name of the cartoon? Uh, Gumball. The Adventures of Gumball or something. Oh, Gumball on uh on Cartoon Network. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that show. I'm familiar with that show. Uh, so you say you you was just uh you was just a Mexican. <laughs> you yep. worked everywhere. Huh? Yes, I worked. Um, I did security. I did um. I worked at FedEx. I worked at um, DHL. I worked. Where else did I work? I worked at Williams Sonoma. 
Uh, I, and all, all of these places I didn't even work at a year. <laughs> wow. How how old are you? 29. All right. So what was what, what was the uh you you so the last place was the security place. What what was so well, the last place was FedEx. Oh the last then, Oh the last place was yeah. FedEx? What you was you yeah. was a FedEx in in the warehouse or you was the uh driver? No, I worked at the hub. So yeah, the warehouse. And where did where where did the interest of becoming a truck driver come into play? Uh, to be honest, I've seen a lot of people. Well, I know a lot of people that work in this field, and they just made it seem fun, you know, traveling, making good money, and I wanted to be a part of that. All right, all right. What was some of the now that you now that you are a truck driver? And you've been out here for, you know, for a little bit over the year. What are some of the stuff that you wish they would have told you about before you got into trucking? Um, How rude security guards are. <laughs> how rude the shippers are. And how tight some of these places can be. And how much I got to cover how other truck drivers, they think they running me. And how disrespectful they are towards women in this field. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, yeah, see, that's see, that's just the it. They want to show you the good side of trucking. They want to show you all the money side of trucking. And as soon as you get into trucking, you see a whole nother world out here, huh? Yes, 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 yes. Um, honestly, that's been like. I've almost quit like several times. Case in point, yesterday I got stuck in the mud mm -hmm. because I had, they wanted me to blindside. I almost left their truck there and walked, walked home. <laughs> That's how I felt at that moment. So what about so what about now? Uh, what about now that you're in trucking? How, how many? What first thing first? Where did you go to get your go with it? Uh, where did you go? Did you go to a trucking company? Um, I guess you could say a company because I went to Swift, but you know they have their own school. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Swift Academy. What was your experience? Yeah. What was your experience with uh with the Swift Academy? We we already know we already know now that you got your license, but what was your experience during the time that you was getting them? Oh, okay. So my experience was. Right, pretty much I passed everything except for the 90 on the first go. Mm -hmm. But my, um, okay, so when I first got there, my instructor got fired. So mm -hmm. they ended up giving us the um, supervisor. He was great. He taught us everything we need to know. Um, then they put me in um, with a trainer. My trainer was an asshole. He um he had a dedicated run. So honestly, I feel like I didn't get the full trainer experience. Everything that I, I know now, I had to learn by myself. Besides backing and driving straight in a straight line, I, I had to learn snow driving by myself. I had to learn mountains by myself because I was only going from Memphis, Tennessee to Texas to Laredo. Now, see, that's that's that bullshit right there with some of these uh, some of these quote unquote companies that they 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 bring you guys on for over the road and and only give you a dedicated trainer. That's 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 bullshit. You know, you're not going to you're not going to learn anything. You're only going to learn just, the you know, just the dedicated route. As you said, you. You had to you had to learn mountains. You had to learn incumbent weather. You had to learn different uh, different receivers, different shippers, and you're not going to learn that if you run in just a dedicated route every day. So yep. and and plus, you say he was an asshole. So how he was treating you? He okay. So I'm a I typically I'm not going to ask a lot of questions. No, it's okay to ask questions. Mm hmm. That I know what I'm doing, but 
so I won't mess up. Like, let's say, okay, I'm press, I press this button next, right? And I look at him and I verify to make sure I'm not pressing the wrong button. Mm -hmm. And he was yelling at me, you, you supposed to know what the hell you doing. Just your last day. Da -da 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 -da. Don't ask me nothing. Mm. I'm just trying to verify so I won't send him the wrong stuff. If you send him the wrong stuff, they're going to kick it back. Well, okay, well, why not just verify, verify that I'm doing the right thing? I'm asking you, so obviously I know what I'm doing. I just don't want to accidentally do the wrong thing. And then now we're sitting here stuck, or as he said, I'm I'm going to ruin his 100 percent on time mm. percentage or whatever. Like he was kind of yeah, he was an ass. He did how how was he when you guys first met? Um, when we first met, he seemed like he was cool. When did the change? When did the change come? Uh, I want to say like maybe a few days into it when we actually had to, you know, sleep in the same truck together. <laughs> they, when, uh, he, when we were on the phone, it was nice. <laughs> they, they, Swift, Swift left, let a, let a male trainer and a female trainer sleep in the, in the same Yes, truck? they do, obviously. <laughs> the mm. reason why they said that, that apparently there's a shortage of trainers. And in order for me to go and get out there, I had to get a male trainer yeah. because it was a weight on female trainers. Okay. But, uh, and you know, they're not paying you for the academy. So I was jobless up until, you know, I finished with my training. Okay. And they only started paying you when you did your over the road training. So, I mean, I still had bills. I couldn't just be like, I'm going to wait. You know, just to feel a little more comfortable. I know how to say no. If I feel like somebody is doing something that I don't like, say I have a whole husband. My husband will come get me from wherever. So. Okay. But still, um, they, did they, did they kind of like ask you in the beginning? Like, you know, we, you know, we don't have a female trainer, but we got a we got a male trainer. But you're gonna have to sleep in the in the same truck with them. Did they did they give you that heads up? Because I I I thought that like especially on a dedicated route, you know, either he would, you know, he would go and sleep in the truck while you're at a hotel or something like that. No, they didn't. They made us sleep. Well, we slept on the truck at like the Laredo Swift Terminal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they, when they called and told me they found me a trainer, they was like, oh, well, it's a male trainer and there's a waiting list and you may be waiting probably at least a month for a female trainer. Mm hmm to come up and at that time I wasn't married so I mean I still I had an I had rent I had a car note I just had things that I had to take care of now at the time you say you wasn't married but he he was your fiance how how did he feel about you uh going out with a trainer and and being cooped up with him for about at least what was it a month month and a half yeah I mean, the thing is, I came home every weekend. Mm -hmm. That's another thing about the dedicated situation. Mm -hmm. I came home every weekend, so I was only gone for like four or five days or whatever. Came back, stayed there with my fiance, and then went back on the road with him. But we were on the phone every day, all day. So. Okay, okay, okay. So did you did you finish out with the with the with with the trainer or or did it come to a point that you had to go with another one? I finished. I finished out with him and hold on one more time. This might be start to follow me again. Oh, go ahead. So yeah, I finished with him. It didn't take too long because I drove like I drove my eleven hours so I can hurry up and get my mouth so I can hurry up and get out of the truck with him. All right. What did what did your what did your fiance say about uh, about you going out truck uh, truck driving when you brought that up to him? He 
he supported me. He um he's the one that actually told me because my schedule, my work schedule and my school schedule clashed, he told me to just quit my job. Okay. So he was very supportive. Is, is and he's actually I've talked to him, I've got in his ear, I've talked to him and it's actually getting his CDL. So he's working on that. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So team driving out here in the future, huh? Yep. All right. So Swift, um, Swift Academy, of course you had to, you know, you kinda like obligated to, you know, pay the, you know, finish up the uh program before mm -hmm. Swift actually paid for your license but by the sounds of it it sounds like you with a a different company so did you fulfill that contract or no no i just went ahead and set up a direct deposit since it's interest free and they were only giving me an extra 40 dollars a week to pay it it didn't matter so i was just like i can go somewhere else to make more money because they put me on a dedicated run Mm -hmm. And the dedicated run was, I was going from Rankin, Georgia to Muskogee, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, my checks kept fluctuating. Why is my check fluctuating? <laughs> they, so, did, they didn't offer you a guaranteed pay? They, they gave me guaranteed miles. I was making, doing like the same amount of miles mm -hmm. every week. And my sometimes my check will be nine hundred. One day it'll be a I mean, one week it'll be a thousand. Next week it'll be eight hundred. It was just Ugh. it was bad. So how 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 is that fluctuating if 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 your miles is guaranteed? If you're doing if you're doing twenty twenty five twenty eight hundred miles, then your check should be depending on how much you're getting paid cent per mile should be set. It shouldn't change. Or the variance shouldn't change. Yep. That's why I had to leave. Wow. And they have terrible um, communication. Terrible. So you and I, had, I broke down for five hours mm -hmm. because one of my axles caught on fire. I didn't hear from my, um, my DM for like three days. Wow. So she's, like they have a thing where they're supposed to call you every day. And, and and all this is happening during your rookie time, right? Yep. All right. So you driving the Swift truck, you you rolling down the down the highway, and all of a sudden, your one of your assholes caught on fire. Was you driving? Uh, uh, was you driving? And where were I was you? When driving. It, where were you when it when it caught on fire? And how did you notice? I was driving in uh, Savannah, Georgia, and a guy pulled up beside me and yelled into my truck, "Hey!" Your trailer's on fire. <laughs> I'm like, what? And I pulled over. I called. Um, Breakdown. I called the fire department. Yeah, I called them too. Uh -huh. I was actually, at that particular moment, I was on the phone with my driving manager. So she knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. But after that, after I got the phone with her and I called, um, they, she had Breakdown call me. I called um, the fire department. And I had to sit there and I had to, I waited for like five hours for, uh, what's that place? TA. For TA to get to me and it was up the street. And I didn't hear from her anymore. So I quit. How much, how much damage did the fire cause to the uh, trailer before the fire department got there? Actually, the trailer was fine. Um, the brakes were like 300 degrees. That like particular side of the axle kind of fucked up, I mean, messed up or whatever. Um, so they just replaced the axle, and it was fine. Was the brake was was the brakes locked? Did did you know if they was locked or not? Um. Yeah, the fire department said they were locked. They said they locked up on me, but I couldn't tell. I didn't feel it. All right. Yeah, and there were no warnings. There were no lights. There were nothing. And this is and this is all in Georgia. What, what highway you was on when that happened? Oh Lord, I can't remember. Uh, it was the one. I think it's like right before. I think that was I sixteen going back into Atlanta. 
Okay. Whatever that one is right before that. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So Back then I wasn't that good. I didn't know about north. I don't I didn't know north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. I don't, didn't remember highways. I didn't know if I was going east. Um I, I didn't know. So <laughs> I Coco, was just following the cloud coming. So Coco, you 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 set up, got out of the shop, and uh hopped on uh hopped on uh on a uh, on 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 a plane train automobile all over to Chicago. How how did you find out about the company in Chicago? And do you want to say the name? Um well I mean I guess it don't matter. Oh you hold on I didn't hear you. And What'd you say? I'm with R D expedited. You are oh R D? Mm-hmm. Uh, Chicago, Illinois, ten ninety nine company. I talked to them. Yep. Yeah. 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 How did you how how did you come across them? Um, a, a fellow driver. I told him that I wanted to do lease purchase mm -hmm. to try to like get my own truck and get better money. Mm -hmm. And he actually told me about this other company, MGR, and. I was like, oh, okay, that sounds good. They give you 85% of the load, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But I haven't gotten a check from them or a settlement from them yet, so I can't really, you know, tell you how much, how good and how true it is, okay. you know, whatever they're saying. But okay. so far, so good. So far, so good that the Black Ops Company is, uh, is uh, taking care of you guys. Always, always so far so good in the beginning. <laughs> always so far yeah, so good in the beginning. Yeah, but um, yeah. but yeah, let let me know. Uh, definitely let me know. You know how 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 the company treated you. We'll 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 come back. You know we'll do a follow up, and uh, and we'll talk about uh, and we'll talk about the little company for a little bit. Um. So you a TikToker? How how long you been on the how long you been on the platform? Um, probably about a year now, but I'm just now starting to get people, you know, on my page, mm -hmm. and I like it. I I need to find time, more time to, you know, create more content, but I like it. It's it's fun. Give me something to do. I don't have any friends, so. How did how how did you come across it? Do you have any kids? Nope, I have two dogs. Those are my children. All right. So, how did you come across the platform, and why and why did you choose TikTok over platforms like Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook to create content? Well, you know what? Okay. I, I don't think Facebook is 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 a place to create content. Uh, I, no, that's just yeah, up with your yeah, the, yeah. F Facebook is more of a family friends type social media outlet. Uh, Instagram mm -hmm. though has has changed the fold. So why why not Instagram? Why not YouTube to create content? Well, I did do content on Instagram, but my my content on Instagram was a little more um, R rated. Mm -hmm. I have um I have a, a decent following and I have like thirteen point seven thousand followers on Instagram. But I have not posted since August eighth, apparently. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, one second, my dispatcher again. No, oh. go ahead. That's probably why I'm not gonna stay so long because they are so unorganized, Lord. <laughs> throughout this uh throughout our conversation they 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 called you like what three times what's what's going on what's why why they keep uh, why they keep calling i mean that what they're something trying to wrong figure out who's gonna pay this lumper fee because i'm not wait wait <laughs> wait what do you mean who's going to pay the lumper fee yeah they the broker sent the code and uh -huh. he, well he had first he didn't know who was going to pay it so he called a broker the broker was like oh we're going to pay it Okay. So they sent me a code, but then I get to the thing. I'm like, okay, so what do I put for account number? He's like, I don't know. Hold on, I gotta find out. Oh. Uh, okay. What the? 
the the account number you 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 talking to the the shipper receiver or you talking to your 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 dispatcher for the account number i'm talking to my dispatch cuz he's talking to the broker and basically they they since covid they've made like all these different ways to do stuff or whatever so they got me paying my lumper fee online instead of with like a EFS check or a com data check they got it online yeah, you. Yeah, so it's, uh, are, it's it, it, it's the uh, it's the it's the pay. I forgot what it is, but it's, it's like relay payment. Yeah, relay, and all you got to do is just put in the what? What you need the account? All you need is the EFS. Well, EFS T check or Com Data yeah, Code. They got me using um um something check, and they want the express code, my driver's license number. My state that my driver's license right, and my right. account number and account number and a driver's number. Okay. Now I'm not I'm not sure, but I, I know for a T check and for the EFS check, you 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 have to provide your driver's license and the state. And then your company give you either a T code or an express code. And that's yeah, I got the express code. And but and that's all you need. That's and all you need. You don't need. Number. Who's who's asking for the account number? Uh, relay payment. They asking for an account number. I'm gonna see if they'll let me do it without putting that account number. <sighs> but yeah. Wow. <laughs> so my my Instagram is mm -hmm. like from my stripper days. I used to be a stripper. Up in Miss and Up in Mississippi. No, in Miami. Oh, okay. You used to do your thing down in Miami. Okay, we we gonna have yeah. to so, we, we we gonna have to talk about that stripper pole in a in a in in that video, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm rusty. I'm I'm nowhere near as nimble and agile as I used to be. I'm I done got fat for. <laughs> All right, so that was uh so so being a stripper was once that you did back in the day. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, being down in uh Miami, Florida, you uh was 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 it popping down there for strippers? It was. It was, and I loved it. Like I made good money, and I didn't even work night shifts. So I worked day shift. Day shift. So I still had my nights to go to sleep. Day shift. It it, it was popping during the day. Yep, it was popping during the day. Wow. What? Okay, so during your stripper, during your stripper time, what, what was some of the what was some stories that you can uh, that you could tell us? Some exciting stories well, that, that that went on in the strip club. Well, um, I have a guy in Florida somewhere. There's a guy in Florida mm -hmm. with my picture tattooed on him twice. Uh and my name tattooed on him twice as well. <laughs> God damn, you was you you was like that diamond, diamond. You 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 was like that. You was like that diamond. How did that make you feel? Yeah. I, how did that make you feel? I I know you had to feel some some kind of way about I, that. I felt a little creeped out at first, and then I was flattered because. Men that even told me that they loved me before I never did that. So, so I, I, what what do you do? Just come up in the strip club and just say, um, "Whiskey, check out this tattoo of you I got." My name was Martini, and Martini. yeah, he did. <laughs> oh my! He God. came in and he was like, "I got your name, got your name on me," and he was like, "I got your picture. I took one of your pictures off Instagram." Oh, that had to be. Well, you said it would. I, I don't know about the being flattered part, being creeped out part. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about the flattered I part, but I, 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 I guess I, I was flattered. So did you? So I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to sound. I, I don't want to sound awkward. But did you give him any play? For I mean, did did you give him any play? 
Oh, no, but I paid. Oh, okay, I'll hold on. I said no, but um, I made him feel like he special, and that's what he's supposed to do. That's all about part of being a dancer. Yeah. You gotta make it sound like they are loved and cared about and be a therapist at the same time and listen to their problems. <sighs> but I mean he had to do that because he was obsessed with you. And I think he was a little slow and that's just me. I think he was a little slow. So um when when you when when you left or when you stopped dancing at that particular club uh did he did he try to find you? Did he turn stalkerish? Did he No, he um he's my friend on Facebook, so he still sees me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And he every now and then he cuz I've had this number for a few years now. He still sends me messages saying, hey, I miss you. Come to Florida. I'll give you money. Or come to Playhouse for the weekend. I'll give you money. Or stuff like that. Now, being that he two tattoos in your name, I, I'm, I'm sure he was one of he, he was one of your generous uh, customers. You you didn't you, yeah. you, you didn't you you didn't take him to the boom boom room. No, like I told you before, I think he was a little bit on the slow side. Oh, okay. Easy, so you know finesse. All right, that's 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 crazy right there, man. Like, what? As it, oh, uh, sixty-five. That's crazy oh. right there, man. But uh, there, you know, being a stripper in a you know in a strip club and everything, there it does comes with its set of challenges and its set of dangers. Uh, other than you know, other than that uh, situation right there, was you ever any any other precarious situations during your strip club days? Uh, yeah, another thing, because I've been dancing for. That was the longest job I ever held. So I, I was doing that for years. Um, I was followed by a pimp before. You you was what now? Followed by oh, got a lot of people around me. Followed okay. by a pimp. <laughs> okay, okay. So he he. he. Here comes the pimp that's trying to recruit you into his stable. Yeah. How did that conversation go? You know, you need this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my uh, my dispatcher been like bothering me about my in and out time because he's trying to get some detention pay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I was followed by a pimp before. How did that conversation go? Um, he was like just trying to, you know, the regular things. Like, you knew if you knew better, you do better, or just the stupid ass pimp lingo that they always say. And I ignored him, and he pretty much followed me out the door. Mm -hmm. But he didn't like follow me out of the parking lot or anything. What were some of the cheesy pickup lines that the guys used on you inside the club? You're the prettiest girl I ever seen. You probably say that to every girl you meet. I feel like that's super corny, cool, but that's just me. <laughs> so you say that so you, you say that was the that was the corniest huh? Mm -hmm. So what was you it was kind of regular. Like, I mean, but I love it because I got paid to do, like, in Florida, they don't expect you to, you know, just come to their house and bust it wide open to them or whatever. Like, in Memphis, that's why I didn't dance in Memphis 
Because in order to make money in Memphis, you have to do extracurricular activities. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, I wasn't I wasn't down for the extracurricular activities. What in the hell is my key? So I moved to Florida. I realized I went down there. I was making hella money. And guys actually paid me to just go out to eat or go to I got paid three hundred dollars to go to a club with a guy and sit in VIP and just look pretty. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Did you, how how did you and your how, how did you and your husband meet? I actually met him when he was nineteen. I was twenty one, and I met him at like a mutual friend auto body shop. Mm -hmm. He was getting his he was getting his car painted. That was the first time I met him. I didn't give him my number or anything. Mm -hmm. And I just kept seeing him out, like, in the town. And that was years ago. We actually just started dating last year. Y'all started dating? Like, damn, when did y'all get married? <laughs> September. This past September? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. When I was in but, Florida. But y'all but been knowing each other for, for a good minute, though. Yes. Oh, okay. So it wasn't it wasn't like a, a a fly by night. Who who initiated it? You or him? Him. Uh -huh. He's been trying to talk to me for years, but back then I was like into like bad boys and men that meant me no good. I got you. I got you. That's what's up. So uh, doing you know you you making you you making hella money. You 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 doing pretty good for yourself. Uh you you you're in a state that 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 you know that you that you making money. Why um why stop? With dancing? Yeah. Because that's not a career, it's a stepping stone. Anybody who makes a career out of stepping that's one to grow on from uh from whiskey right here. <laughs> All right, all right. So that stripper pole in the video is—is is that is that yours in the house? Yes, I told my husband I wanted a stripper pole, and he made it happen. It's good fitness. Okay, okay. So you still I'm uh, trying to get back in shape. <laughs> so you still doing so you still doing the damn thing on that? I'm trying to anyway. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh so now that you now that you're a truck driver and you know you're working for this black ops uh company, how often do you uh you know, being that that's up in Chicago and you stay down in Florida, how often do you get home? I live in Memphis now. I, I mean, I mean, I'm in Florida. You, you right. You did say Memphis. Okay, go ahead. I get home whenever I want to go home. I actually just came home, uh, came from a 34, like day before yesterday, and I'm going home again for Thanksgiving, and then I'm leaving back out the day before, the, the day after Thanksgiving. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so Coco, man, thank you for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that we got a chance to uh, get to know one another. So thank you very much for that. I got a. I got a few quick questions for you before you get on up out of here because I. I hear in the background you're getting ready to roll out. So.